have a special guest today in Piping Talks. We have Mr. Briscoe, Jason Briscoe, um, who is a bagpiper, played for many bands. I'm sure we'll hear all about it. He's also a composer um, and just very opinionated uh, uh, piper that loves talking about medleys and, and how could uh, piping music could be done better. So we've uh, known each other for, I don't know, like over 10 years. Um, we actually worked together for a few years and that's how we created a friendship and uh we just love talking about bagpipe in general so uh jay how are you doing i'm good buddy i'm good thanks for having yeah. me on man yeah of course excited i know you're all we always talk about medleys and we and we did unreal as well so um just tell us a little bit about like how you get how you got to to pick up the pipes how you got started um and then uh we'll take it from there yeah, I started when I was about 10 years old. My grandfather used to play, so, um, and at 10, I was sort of dazzled by bagpipes. thought they were pretty interesting and unique. I had not had any really exposure to that at 10 years old, so I was pretty, pretty dialed in about it and excited about it. So I started at 10, took off with him shortly after uh, I had a small little stint with the 48th Highlanders in Toronto. I went to... You're from Toronto, kind of, right? Forgot from to mention Toronto, it, but from you're, Toronto. you're from Toronto, yeah. Canadian, yes, sir. So after that, went off to Jim McGilvery as a teacher and kind of really nice. started to really kind of ramp up. I think at that point, my playing, my technique, my confidence as a player started to really go up. Joined the 78th when I was quite young. Um, but in, you know, in my, in, in my whole term, I've had spans with Toronto Police, Peel Police for a little while, the 78th and more recently Scottish Power. Um, but yeah, started when I was 10, started really kind of I think really leaping up when I was about 14, 15, 16. Um, and then sort of haven't looked back since. Just been enjoying it. And like you say, we chat a lot about it. So I feel like I'm on the sidelines as a fan, like, a, you know, watching all this stuff now from the side and enjoying it with a different lens and a different perspective than I used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely want to dive into that because we did text it a lot over the worlds and uh, I'm not, I was not playing and, and, and you're not playing. And it's like looking back yeah. from... Um, or looking at it from a different angle. So I definitely want to chat about it. Um, you did mention the Frasers. So you were uh, young, you played a few years, and that was like um, Blair actually uh, and I, on a previous uh, episode, we talked about it where um, some article came out about how it was it was a team with like really good players at the time. And mm -hmm. it was an article about, you know, building a medley and, and sort of like bringing tunes to band practice and stuff. How, how was it like being so oh, young with, oh. you know, Bill Livingston and all those great players? Listen, I'll jog myself on trying to remember all the names, but imagine yourself being a 14 year old kid, just turned 14 fresh, sitting around that table, half crapping your pants, wondering if you belong at that table. And it was a pretty magical process of trying to create medleys because you had the likes of Michael Gray, you had Bruce, Scandi, you had Bill, obviously, and then you had all the brilliant minds that sat in between all of that. And it really was like a mishmash. It was come to the table and what do you think? What do you like? Play it. So that at 14 year old too, I'd also have a little bit of like a hell of a lot of nerves sitting there. And I'd be like, I'd throw a tune out at 14. And, and then as I sort of got a little bit older, I'd start throwing some of my own ideas or some of my own compositions. And of course you're half crapping yourself because you don't know, are people going to like this? Or are they going to dismiss yeah. it? Or what's it going to go over like? So I remember fondly sitting at that table and I remember also being young and getting hyper excited about the moments that like truthfully, like Michael and Bruce would show up with ideas because the stuff that they would come up with was so for me. So far, right, right, ahead right. Of my tried my traditional early years of like of music that it was just it was like groundbreaking stuff and starting to think like that. And I, I still think that that was my norm because it was so early on in my piping career. Like I didn't have a chance to become ultra traditional because I was thrown into the 78 four or five years after playing. So right. my norm at that time was like hyper creative, unique stuff. So that was, mm -hmm. it sort of like set the tone, I think, for me as a player, composer and everything going forward. Do you think that influenced, I mean, you did say it's, it's, so, it's exactly that. You probably didn't have that traditional um, sort of like playing because everyone around you was always super future forward thinking in terms of tunes and stuff. You think that definitely um, influenced like, you know, your oh. musical, uh, you know, writing tunes and stuff? 
I think it did from my side, but I think it also influenced what I listened to. Like, I think I, right. uh, I got inspired by stuff that was different. And I rem, you know, it was funny. I go back to like old medallies and stuff even now. And I think about stuff and I don't go back often, but I remember one in specific and it was this, um, Pokemon medley and it was bonkers. It was crazy for the time. It was so different. And I remember being so drawn to it because it was so outlandish and unique. And truthfully, fast forward to where we are today, I'm sure we'll get into this worlds and talk about that stuff. There's only certain bands and certain performances that have more performances that have really pushed certain molds. And I remember mm -hmm. that being one of them. And I would say the 78th as a 14, 15 and on kid playing in that band, man, I was lucky. Like to have that kind yeah. of experience to be at the very front of that was, was, uh, was very, very cool. Yeah, it's funny because uh, obviously we, we talk like almost daily about random stuff, but every time you're like, uh, or, 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 you know, listening to Mitley's, you always think back about, um, what is it, the the album Flam, uh, Flame of... Uh, Flame of Wrath. Wrath is it? Yeah, yeah. Flame of Wrath, And you're, yeah. you're like, oh, there's like long pieces, you know, like Warren Mitley's like that. And it's so funny because that was, I must have been in the 50s, isn't it? Um, no, but it was like <laughs> an old, it was an old album. And... Uh, and oh, years later, on, you're still like, oh, my God, that was, to me, it was. <laughs> um, um, but, yeah, you still go back to it, and you're still like, oh, my God. It's I true. Like, even play, even we'll play McGrath, I feel like it's still relevant today. Like, and this is part of my, I'm not jumping ahead, it's part of my beef with things, but it's like this idiom doesn't progress very quickly. And I think when you listen to Flame of Wrath, and there is still so much music that if another big band came out and played that exact concert today, with fresh ears from an audience, they would be, wow, that's amazing. You know? Right. So it's still, it's still incredible. And I also remember at one point, I remember breaking my, um, I had screws and pins in one of my fingers and I remember coming back and we were doing a concert in Ticonderoga in New York. And, uh, you know, soloists were like one of the biggest things, especially with the 78 getting to be a, a concert soloist. And I remember that moment too, when Bruce, Gandhi, Michael, and Bill had asked me to do a solo. And first of all, I was like, I didn't think my finger was working all that hot at that time either. But it was like thrown into that. And then off the back of that came Flame of Wrath and then getting to play a solo in that. And that was, again, I think it was 16 when I did that one. So for me, that was like, again, being wow. thrown onto that stage. Amazing thing for me, an incredible amount of confidence from them to be able to throw me on the front of that stage with the, with that right. 78th label and saying, yeah, you go, man, you know, and that was, that was a big for confidence it. booster for me as a kid, for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, this is one of the reasons I, I, I do this because conversation is, is to have the stories that maybe, you know, people listen, I don't know if it's an album or not, but, you know, and then knowing that whole we all knew where at the time and then, you know, the, the confident booster that was for you at the time and, and all those names. So that's yeah. very awesome. Um, it's funny. We've known each other for a long time, but I feel like I, I'm still learning stories. Uh, actually <laughs> awesome. um, and then, so from there, you obviously we'll talk about, you know, the business you have on the side, but then you moved to New York um, and you started, I don't know if you were writing music in New York or you started writing music when you were in Toronto, but, um, I remember it was MySpace back in the days, but you had, you know, tunes that were, um, you know, sort of like electronic music. Now it's more popular, right? Like when you listen yeah. to Lincoln Hilton and, um, all those, those guys, it wasn't that popular at the time. Um, uh, how did you come up like writing, um, you know, is this 1999, um, or even the tune that is the intro of, of this, um, of this podcast that you wrote, which I think is awesome. And the power played it. How, like, what's the story behind, you know, those tunes and how did you start composing? Um, so naturally, I think as a byproduct of being amongst the company that I was in when I was younger, like the Michael Grays and Bruce's and everyone that was writing. And even if you weren't a Michael or a Bruce, you were writing. I still feel like there was, it's like, there was a platform for right. creativity and creating. So even if you weren't there, you had a platform to still create, which was cool. So I started experimenting with stuff and I couldn't even tell you what my first tunes were. They were probably pretty bad, but I remember also being in art college and uh, I, man, I wish I had the technology that we had now, but at the time I remember renting from my school an eight track recorder, I'm not dating myself. I'm 42, but uh, you know, still <laughs> <laughs> an eight track recorder, lugging that thing from Toronto up to Aurora to sit down with a practice channel on a tape, trying to record multiple things. And that's, and that's how I started to start recording bits. And then from that 
came harmonies from that came layering and sampling different stuff. I got really geeky about right. it, but that I don't think was even my own. That was my own expression, but my real uh, inspiration from that was Martin Bennett. So Martin Bennett yeah. to me was, was, and still is just incredible, incredible composer, performer, thinker, the way he was able to express music. And I think still very rarely do you come across people, even in today and YouTube and the amazing stuff that comes out, people that create with the same sort of level uh, that he did. So he was a major inspiration for me and also young at the time too, right? So he wasn't old. And um, so for me, that, that he was, he was, he was achievable. Like what he was doing was on par with what I was trying to get to. So that was pretty right. cool. And then I started recording with stuff. And then from the recording came the confidence. And then, like I said, in the 78th, then came the tunes to the table to present some of them. Um, like some of them, I remember even, I think one of the times they, uh, the phrase was played. Uh, it was funny. We played a, thir- a three parted intro tune and it was the first and second part of John Karen's tune and the third part of my own tune made into one tune, which is kind of funny. <laughs> oh, I, couldn't yeah, it was, t- uh, I couldn't, I can't even tell you the name of it. it. Thank you. That's what it was. Exactly. So like things like that happened. Right. And again, those little moments. Mm-hmm. So I just kept on writing. Um, but as I mentioned before, I think my complacency was standard. And I don't want to say boring, but traditional and kind of like non pushing the mold forced me to want to do the opposite and start to create stuff that was different. And right. there was like, listen, is the track that opens this piece that different, ultra different? Maybe, maybe not. But I still feel like there's an energy and a drive and a passion to some of that stuff that I tried to go mm-hmm. towards that is going to be a little bit more progressive than the normal stuff we hear. Now, mind you, it's difficult in bagpipes because you're restricted to so few notes. There's only so many things you right. can do. And then then you put yourself in a band setting where technical stuff and you have to think about expression and technical and how far do you push? You've got a lot more constraints around things there. And then even when there was the, um, the, the slow piece that uh, the 78th um, played only a few years ago uh, that had very big, it was mostly driven as an, as a harmonic piece than anything else. So while there is an underlying bass rhythm that was going underneath it, it was created as like a, um, and I'm not over over selling it, but like more, it was supposed to be more symphony like feel, like this big orchestra, yeah. big orchestral moment thing. And I still think that came across in a really unique way because people heard it and they were like, "Well, that's weird." And whether you liked it or not, that's okay. It was just different, and I yeah. think that was like to me that I, was yeah. an accomplishment. You know? Yeah, there was uh, like if he. If, if no one says anything about it, you know, it's like, you know, it is, and it's never a good thing, but if it's rather bad or terrible or, or even, you know, great, then that's, it means that it didn't impact on, on the person. Um, exactly. actually Blair mentioned that he said, um, uh, actually it's funny, Chris, uh, who is the Chris Armstrong was first person on, on the, on the, um, the show was talking about one of the medley that he, he put together, which was, um, was the Pibrook. And, uh, yes. he was like, Oh, I've had it for, um, you know, a few years thinking about it. And then the week after I was talking to Blair Porter, uh, and he was like, um, he didn't know, he didn't listen to the episode, but he was like, actually there was just one medley that Scottish power played. And when I first heard it the first year, I, I was not having it. It was, it was, it was not that great. Um, <laughs> that but then the year good. after he was like, Oh, I loved it. It was like one of the medley he, he actually, you know, talked about. So. Um, and that was like a few years ago. So it's funny how it's, it, you go from one extreme, but at, at least it had an impact on, on the listener. So Totally. I couldn't tell you what band it was, but I remember watching the Worlds this year. You were in New York. Obviously, I was in Spain. So I wasn't messaging you. But at the time, Alex Gandhi was awake. So Alex and I were writing back and forth. And I remember one of the MSRs, a band came and played. Yeah, as, as they always are, you listen to the same tune over and over 15 times from 15 bands. Yeah. <clears throat> and then... Someone came out and played a really unique reel. And I was laying with Alex and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> it was was just, it SFU? Like, I think it must have been SFU. might have been SFUs. It? And it was, I don't know what it was, but it was, to me, it was ultra refreshing to hear something different there. And it was played yeah. really well. And I was like, that's great. You know, it just caught my ear because it was, it was unique. It was different, you know? I think it might be SFU because... You, you know, when I work, I, I put on pipe bands and it was just like a bunch of YouTube videos and it was the walls like MSRs. And I remember, you know, you're working, you're not like paying attention to what you're listening. So, totally. And then I remember being like, 
wait a minute, what, what am I that? listening right now? And yeah, yeah, I, yeah exactly. and I told him back to YouTube, and it was the real, actually, it was the real FSFU. There you go. So, it must be. It must yeah, be I, I think it must have been that one. Um, and um, so, obviously, we we go way back. We obviously, uh, you were living in London. I was living in London, and we worked together. We were yeah. listening to, to pipe and stuff all the time. And we still, to this day, like, send links, um, yeah. you know, with, like, tunes and, like, I mean, I, I love that. And from, yeah. from there... Um, I remember we'll go for, for dinners and drinks and talk about pipe and stuff. And, um, and we were like, well, maybe there's a, a platform that needs to be created to, to actually have, you know, access to monthly sort of like play stuff of 10 tracks oh, that man. are totally. super future forward. And like, you know, and I remember we, we were like, is it a playlist <laughs> that we make ourselves? Do we feature an artist, which, which, you know, you're big into the community and featuring artists and stuff. And so, um, we had this little thing called unreal.fm for people that don't know. Um, and, um, it was just like, just great content. Uh, I mean, I thought it was great content. I, I think yeah. people liked it. It was just unique stuff, but, um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, there's no question to that, but it's more like that was, um, that was a great little thing that um was featuring artists and and i met I, I actually not met in person but i discovered art through 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 that too unreal was great like i guess you know in our f field of work we this is what we do we build products and we look at brands and we help build these things so it was natural it was a natural fit for us to like express this and and you're right, there's such an unselfish side to wanting to amplify, especially next gen young talent. So I go back to my A track and I was like, I wish I had a place to share some of the crap I yeah. was making at that point, because that would have been cool. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, we had Lincoln Hilton as our first guest. Mm -hmm. And he actually wrote stuff and crafted and recorded stuff specifically for that that the world hadn't heard yet. And that was amazing. That was so cool. And then off the back of that, I know came several, several musicians. Challenge, as you know, was that we ran out of guests. We ran out of people, which is such a problem. You know, there's so yeah. much great talent, especially young talent. But we reached a threshold, what, maybe a year and a half in, where we were like, we don't have any more guests and more recorded material, the stuff that's coming out yeah. that we can use. But it was such a great piece because I also think it actually forced – some people to get into a studio or to record at their home or do something and create and write and craft more because they wanted to be on unreal.fm and that was so much fun yeah. and although it, yeah. it's, it's it, although it's a dead product now and it's gone i'm so glad moments like that happen you know for the for the yeah, for the yeah. for the joy that it gave us and everybody else and for the listening for that like we had a few decent listeners every month mind you a small community but we just we still had that and that was quite a nice thing yeah yeah, yeah. and it led me to like um, obviously I know your personality, but for people listening, like you, you, you sort of, uh, I would say you have a, uh, people say they have a love and hate relationship with New York. And I feel like you have that with, with piping because you love it and you talk about it. And, and I'm saying this as a friend, I know you're like, oh, no, no, you good, know, man. Bands, you know, but you, you, you love it. You still listen to it. And then you, you, you're always generating ideas around, um, you know, uh, helping Chris Armstrong with, with his, his book, for example, or, you know, Unreal, um, and also the high note that uh, you were, you created um, a few years ago. Um, and so it's like f fresh ideas. Are you, are you still thinking about like going back into playing full time in the band? I know you, I know you are, but like, you know, where is the, where do you see uh, a sweet spot between, okay, you still want to compete, but, and that's a lot of people. Blair is the same same boat. Um, you know, he was talking about you know I love playing, but also like the current model is not right there. What would you like? What is your idea of the 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 playing the bagpipes in, in a in a band format? It's funny, um, and I haven't formulated any kind of idea or thinking to this. But I, I wrote a post a long time ago. I couldn't even tell you exactly what was in it, but a call to sort of reimagine this space. Um, I think the one word that you said that you think I want to get back into is the, the last thing I want to get into, which is competing. I just don't understand why right. we compete in this space. And, and most people from the outside, inside the pipe band world, we all know this. This is our expression. We compete. And I remember my uh, wife, girlfriend at the time when she came on was just like, you compete 
for this? It's like, what musical instrument? Like, do you have like a guitar off of comp- competitions of things? You know, like it just doesn't, why did, why do we do this? It doesn't make sense. And maybe it does make sense. And we've never really challenged it, but so much of me, I think what I feel right now is the very first thing that rises to the top, two things are um, camaraderie, the people. I miss a lot yeah. of the people. So when I'm not in a pipe band, I miss the relationships, the friendships, the laugh. This is a fun thing to do. And it's really, it's kind yeah. of silly internally as pipe bands. It's silly and it's fun. And I miss that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, 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 the child in me enjoys that. Um, and then there's the music. Like I enjoy playing music. Now I say that with a caveat because I really enjoy playing the fun stuff. But I'll, truthfully, for me, like playing MSRs over and over and six eights over and over doesn't excite me anymore. And that's just for me. And then yeah. the idea that I have to, I remember at the time in New York, I was flying once a month to the power in Glasgow. I moved to London. I was traveling once or twice a month up for the power to then go up to a competition in Dumbarton and stand in the piss and rain and play an MSR. And I don't know, it just didn't, it just, it, on my on my list of favorite things to do, it just doesn't sit up there. I'm just <laughs> picturing, and it's and now that I'm in New York, I'm just picturing you um, telling your friends. So what's up this weekend, Jay? And you're like, well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, going to Ben Barton. Um, then there but the funny thing and, is, uh, but the funny thing is, is it filled me. It really did, and I wouldn't change it for a second because right. I loved it, and I and I loved it because I love I love the team sport. I love the camaraderie. I love the idea of going out to put on a great performance. I really dislike the idea that we benchmark ourselves against four judges' opinions to quantify whether you are good or not. And I think that's right. my that's my problem with it. Is uh, and unfortunately, maybe even you could look at it in a societal way, but it's like people get affected by this kind of stuff, right? Like you think that like your your year or your band's performance or whatever like that, we get hyper infect- affected by how we have placed our as a band. And I remember personally too, my wife as well, when we, oh, 2013, 2014 world, something like that, we were second. I was very excited at second. The following year, I thought this was going to be our year. Uh, and we had a, a nice, very low mark in one of ours. We had some really high marks in one low and put us one point, one or two points out of first. And I was oh, so deflated, so upset. Yeah. Because I wanted that world. And then I stopped. And then I just changed my mindset. And I know this is Chris, too, because it's not about winning. It's just going out and putting on a good performance. And I love that because I think that's what it's all about is like, at the end of the day, it's going on and putting a good performance. My challenge is why does the performance have to be in the confines of a competition space? You know, could it like if you look at um, Glastonbury or Woodstocks or things like that, like there are so many great bands musicians and everything and we're much capable of we're very capable of learning lots of music and playing great concerts like imagine we could just do that and enjoy right. doing a lot of music and hearing what bands like if you were given the freedom to not play a medley uh that has to have a chassé in it that has to have a slow air in it what would it be what would it look like would it be called a medley would it be something else like that's where yeah. i start to get excited about it but my challenge is I don't know if in my lifetime I will see that change. And I don't know if this yeah. idiom wants that change. And that's okay because I'm not going to revolt or push against it. But deep down, I really wish that we could push this thing forward. Right. And I know how competitive you are too. So, you know, uh, you, your wife is probably like, you know, he's not been talking to me for a week. You know, he's so upset <laughs> after the second place. You know, he doesn't eat, you know, yeah, it must be terrible. Just, just um, lock myself in the cupboard. I am. High, the funny thing, and that's, and that's and the, the funny thing. You, you, yeah, exactly. Just feed me a little straw. <laughs> but you, but you, you make a good point because I am highly competitive. Yeah. But in this realm, I don't see the competition being a great thing for some reason. Yeah. And I also find the rigidness of, call it the world's Friday. You come out, you do this, and then you do this, and then you come out Saturday, and you do this, and you do this. And the formalities of it, there are things to be said for tradition that I very much value and appreciate, and I love that. But I feel even when I listen to the worlds on the Saturday and the recordings and the conversation and everything, it just hasn't evolved. And I wish that like a lot of instruments or bands or idioms or traditions even, 
look what food has done. People are pushing these things. Look at, you know, design, look at everything, look at products, look at how we use stuff in our life. It always evolves. I would just love to see evolution in this space, you know, in such a big way. Right. It's funny. Also, you and, also and... for the next generation too, sorry to cut you off, buddy, but like, huh? does the, what do, how can you amplify and fire up that next young generation with something beyond, you know, that they, they can, they can get them excited about it. And how can you grow this space even more so by getting them, giving them more freedom and flexibility to express versus the confines of what we have, you know? Yeah. And actually it's, uh, it's, um, uh, you know, you see, uh, good players, um, you know, James Duncan McKenzie, fantastic, Ooh. you know, composer. The music is so good. Um, I think he played for the power and before a few years, or, yeah. but most of those people played in the band and then, you know, they go on doing solo stuff and the solo stuff is like, okay, let me, you know, it's express myself here. And, and, and we, we talked about it, but, and, and I remember you were so excited about, um, Trist, Trist, um, Trist, you yeah. know, like the Trist group of, of, of pipers, um, for those that don't know, you should go on YouTube and, and kind of listen to it. But it's, uh, it's sort of the format that you were really excited about, um, uh, when they first came out. It a hundred percent, just because it's just trying to, and mind you, the, the, the collective of, um, people playing in Trist is amazing. And yeah. just like, you know, again, maybe like my 14 year old self sitting in the 78s, uh, circle creating medleys, that's like the graduated adult version of what I would love to stand in the middle. Of, you know, because yeah. the minds and what they're coming up with. And also, I don't, it's not their full time. It's just like a little side funky thing that they all love to, they want to do something amazing with. And again, I feel yeah. like, you know, bagpipes, you're limited. You're limited by notes, by uh, by a pitch, by everything that you got to stick within. So, like, how far can you go with it? But I love what they do. Yeah. 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 Um, it makes me think like, um, you know, you have these solo artists doing, um, you know, albums and stuff, and you were talking about recordings and stuff. Is this something that you're thinking about, like potentially put on, you know, more of a, because you still love the instrument and you, you get to, the, you got to that level, you, you're very good players, you write music, you're not into, you know, the, the, the pipe band playing of like, you know, Strasbys and reels and stuff. Why not doing an album? Are you thinking about it? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> You know what? I, if, if you, I'll be completely honest with you. I love playing. I wish bagpipes weren't such a um, maintenance fast because here I am. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure we'll get into this. But here I am, living in Spain. You come over here. If you want your instrument to be at a premium level, it just takes so much time, care, finesse, and everything to keep it there. And if it's not going to be there, I don't particularly want to play it in that sense. So I'm either, I'm either in, I'm two feet in or I'm two feet out. Um, right. And while there are digital pipes and all these other good things that you can, and I use those just to kind of keep my fingers going and stuff like that, which I love. Um, I've got lots of ideas of this stuff. I wouldn't rule it out for some future day. And I don't even think it would be predominantly a bagpiping album. It would probably just be some experimental thing that I could use bagpipes as one vehicle or mode or um, uh, one instrument to sort of like, you know, push forward within it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, well, you could maybe, the maybe it's it's not a it's not a pivot, but if there was one thing that excited me more with this right now, it would be what we did with the high note. It would be just to work right. with younger kids and work with next gen talent and like fire them up, get them excited. This is from a musical standpoint, from a executional standpoint, but also from like a uh, positivity belief confidence um aspect for me that was crazy rewarding and that's where I, right. I think i would have a much more rewarding experience doing something like that than getting in a studio and creating another album right and and and, and to, to dive more into the high note it was like can you tell us more around obviously we we, we talk a lot i'm a drummer you're a piper so it was like an easy mm -hmm. match but it was very much you um coming up with like hey uh, you, you you know, let's, let's play in a, a lower grade band and, um, and team up and, and, um, and help them. Um, uh, but yeah. like, what was the, how did this <laughs> idea sort of like uh, came to life? And I remember you talked to me all the way through, but, um, what was it that made you be like, I think we should do it. So it's probably more, uh, an inspiration probably from my son who's turning six shortly. And I think like 
as a father, the early love you feel for kids and watching them grow and flourish and stuff, probably the emotional side of that is what drew me to it at first. Um, the second thing was I love, if I was going to jump back to something, it would be to jump back with Chris and to go back with power because I, 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 I love it. I enjoyed that a lot. But I think for, for what I, when we, when I left the power as well and high note came in, it was a burning desire to do something bigger than myself and my own ego inside a grade one circle. There's nothing. And it, it goes back to the comment of finishing second and realizing I actually have nothing else to prove there. I don't I have nothing right. to prove. I don't need a world championships. And while it would be a lovely thing to have, it was my main thing. And now it's it, like, if that happens, it's an incredible experience. But for me, like uplifting uh, a younger, young next gen talent to me is a much more rewarding experience. So when that trend, when that happened, I know I pitched you and I said, no grade two bands. It's just got to be like younger juvenile or a young, like, or grade four, basically band or a four B band that has a decent membership, a desire to go forward, but needs help, need help. And the problem is, I think one of the challenges is, is, uh, the good players in pipe bands usually end up at the top, the top bands. They end up in the grade one bands or the grade two bands. Yeah. And there's not, unless they have a feeder system that ends up having money to afford to have great, you know, talent there teaching, who's spending time teaching a grade four B band and working with them. Yeah. So that was sort of my, uh, that was sort of my passion was to, to do that. And I, a, if I jog my memory, correct me if I'm wrong here too, buddy, but it was, you know, we put this out, we had this idea we had quite a few applications from bands, if I'm not mistaken, like 70 odds or maybe no 60 bands or something like that, of which we That's chose, crazy. we chose, um, I believe it was five to seven that we thought had the most potential. And I say that from a, from an aspect of leadership to numbers, to membership, the amount of people in the band, the age of the band and where we knew you and I could have the most impact in that setting uh, to have like, you know, a real desired result at the end of that. And then we had our top five or seven and we put it onto a Facebook group and said vote and everyone voted. And I believe it was plus 500 or some odd public votes and something. And then that led us to Kutur in district yeah. in, in <laughs> Aberdeen. And I remember uh, you yeah, flew well, there. Yeah, I flew there quite a few times. I flew there like two or three times up to see the band, worked with them on sound, worked with them on a lot of things. It was a big year. Like we obviously worked for music. It just, it's amazing when you come in that setting and you realize, um, and I say this without ego, how many things you know that just people don't know in the lower band yeah. that can completely yeah. change their game. If we spent a bit more time working with that audience, how we could elevate them. And I, if I'm not mistaken, buddy, we took that band from way out of the top six to second in the world that year. Um, yeah, and I don't think they had right. ever seen a result like that. And that was, that was, I remember getting that trophy and holding that and being around them. And I remember, and I feel it right now, I had tears choking up. Like that was like an ultra rewarding yeah. experience. And that made me, that was, uh, that was far more rewarding than going and playing a crushing MSR in the, in the grade one final. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and and, yeah. and people are different, but I, I, I mean, we spend the weeks together at the walls, like playing with the band, and uh, but the words afterwards uh, was um, oh, it's fabulous, man. And the, it's just and the truth is too is like it was unique. It was a great concept, and the judges, I, for the most part that I know, weren't looking at the fact that I was in the circle, and also I didn't want to be in the front and center. The idea is that yeah. we're tucked away. This is all about the band and what their capabilities. We're just going to help push them forward. And yeah. that was an amazing experience. Now, mind you, I know we came to the end of that season and wanted to continue doing that. And the idea was to eventually find more mentors uh, and grow that audience. So, you know, maybe maybe this is a an open invitation to to get in touch with me or something like that, because I would love the high note to still stay around and find more yeah. top level quality. Doesn't have to be grade one, just top level people who want to integrate into those things and work with younger kids and younger bands and bring them up and elevate them. That's what it's all about, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Um it, yeah, it didn't it didn't have anyone afterwards, but uh um for anyone listening, um it's uh it was 
I mean, even for me, it was unique. Uh, I've always, you know, played pipe band music. Obviously, I come from Britney, so pipe band music was always a great one. I played one year in a juvenile band, but um, and so going to to a grade uh, three, four, it was it was unique, and the rewards was very different. You know, even you know if it, you know making top six would have been amazing. You know, you know what's funny about it though, like you ask about like what would you do to push some of these like little idioms, or what would you change, and that's what I liked about Trice and what they were doing. While I acknowledge the fact that the platform isn't going to change. This is where ideas like unreal.fm, this is where ideas like the high note can come in. So they're not challenging it, but they're new, fresh ideas to complement the existing platform to try and push things forward. And I'm all right. for that, you know, and, it, and, and if you treat this stuff like a startup and you just launch it and you test it and if it works and it stays around awesome and if it just dies away then it dies away but at least it was there for a moment and hopefully you walk away with a great story and, and a success. Yeah, yeah yeah is there anything else um that you've seen uh in, in pi band music uh maybe you know a concept uh like one of these or a band or a musician um or even a tune that you um came across in the past few months and you were like, wow, like that's, that's like right up what I like to do or, 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 um, that's challenging the, the, like you said, just the, the way things are. Um, immediately no, but there's one thing that comes to mind and it was the moment when shots decided to turn around and face the audience while they were playing. Yeah. And I was like, Blair mentioned that. That's so funny that uh, you're mentioning that was just, yeah, such, yeah, yeah. but this is, this shows you how, small changes can have such dramatic effect in this circle because those things don't happen we all like robots follow the same formula and go in play come out yeah. play so uh those little moments stand out big time and i remember that moment and being like that is awesome that's great all it is is turning your body around it's almost like honoring yeah. your audience. Because are you playing for the judges? Or are you playing for the crowd? I like the idea of playing for the, for the crowd. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. That's one thing that comes to mind. But it does make me think in general, just like, you know, when you think about a medley structure. Okay, so we've got, you know, it's got a reels. Okay, check. We got a jig. Check. We got stress pace. Check. It's a formula. Like, it's a formula, dude, yeah. Is, is it a formula, though? Like, why does it have to be that way? What if you just came out and played six minutes of reels? Like, <laughs> but you know, I know, just I, know fire through it. I know you can't, yeah, just come out and fire and go. <laughs> but you know what I mean. And the I tempo just, is like, yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. And it's not obviously not like that's a long shot idea, of course, but it's like, I just like the idea of, uh, and I say this with respect, but democratizing the existing platform to try just new things. And maybe that system stays in place, but are there other moments, other venues other concert series that can unite uh the fm in Verary, power bog hall blah 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 all of these guys to come together and do something non-competitive the challenge is none of us get paid for this this is just yeah. out of pure passion so how do you organize taking a bunch of time off and flying to call it spain to come and do this amazing that's a mega cost and unfortunately you know yeah. It's not like you have promoters that are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to fly big rock bands, you know, down. It's not the same. It, yeah. You, you did mention um, you when you were listening to uh, Blair Porter episode and you said, oh, it's funny. He's mentioning some of the Toronopolis uh, stuff. Yeah. Like Toronopolis was uh, when they had those those medleys, which were um, – just insane but in a very i mean in a good way you rather love it like we were talking back about you rather love it or hate it that was exactly that it's a oh my god i'm so into it or jesus christ what is this you know like it, it could go both ways but it was never like eh, it was another medley you know because it was very unique what was your your take on, on those medleys you know what i loved about that moment i remember so fondly to um ian mcdonald sean James McCaddy, like the, the the setup that we had. And it was almost like, what do we want to do this year? And it was, you know, it was like, let's just, let's like, I remember Ian McDonald, like I remember throwing stuff out and he was like, I love it. Let's do it. And it was so outlandish. And we had crazy support internally to just go and sort of do whatever we wanted in that sense. And we, we right. sort of threw the rules away that year still followed the formula but threw the rules away and tried to do our own thing and i remember that concert 
Remember Rob Crabtree? He was in it, uh, and it ended with like serious disco tunes and like uh, a disco <laughs> ball and thumping nightclub music and girls dancing on stage and going crazy. And I was just, it was the most amazing concert year medleys everything it just went totally against it and i would say most people didn't like it very much and that's okay because it was it was totally against anything that had normally been done before but right. again you didn't always have to love it but it got a lot of people talking at that time but that was one hot sure. year that kind of happened and then it kind of went away and it was just another one of those special little blips yeah. where we went and created something really radical but that wouldn't have happened just like bill driving the 78 and the stuff from Michael and Bruce and having that leadership to say, let's do it. We had that leadership with Ian to say, yes, let's do it. Big trust at that time, you know? Right. I, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I remember actually, I remember that year too, coming over to the worlds and playing really well and getting just thrown under the bus big time. And that was, <laughs> <laughs> I and you remember going back in the close at home for a week and not getting <laughs> that that my straw again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that a few times in my life. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, all, that's it's 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 great to hear again. Like one of the reasons I had this conversation is because I listen to it all the time. And uh, but it's like, what really? What was the real story? Like, how did this this thing came about? And like, because yeah. like you said, you need to have the trust from the major, but also just have the right sort of set of people that just. Um, throw ideas and just kind of go outside of the box you need like a good balance of like people that are like here to keep things into a place because i'm sure and i would love to be like you know fly on the wall and like be there when you know some tunes are thrown um i mean some could be bad tunes but some could be like holy i wish like i wish the band could play that um or i wish the world could you know listen to it um totally. but i love like the backstories of it uh, yeah yeah it's great man uh, what's, um, uh, uh, you know, want to wrap up We're already 40 minutes in, but I, uh, what is your favorite, you, you talked about the camaraderie and I know you love that and you've played with different bands, you know, power, um, played with Peel as well, Toronto Police 78. What is, um, uh, the best sort of like, um, you know, peak moment where, and I, I'm pretty sure you know what you're going to say, but what is like the moment where you're like, uh, Wow, I'm having fun playing tunes, but also the camera is like next level, just having so much fun uh, with the people and playing music with. Um, and you just felt like, you know, the that that playing plus plus camaraderie were, were all, you know, at a, at a peak for you. And it was probably, you know, I'm thinking of Colorado uh, when you guys went to Colorado with 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 the power. You know, it was good fun. Probably a lot of different stories I never, that I never, you know, I had to share online. Heard. but. I remember Chris sharing a video at the time on Facebook of him and I playing bagpipes on a seesaw, uh, going back and forth. <laughs> oh, I do remember that one. That was a good one. Listen, is it it's like one of those things? You, know you know what it is? It's like everything in time of life and also the confidence in your own self of where you are in your life. And at 14 in the 78th, my God, it was amazing. But I also... Uh, uh, you know, for, for, I remember being on the band buses and, oh my God, talk about wild. That band was, was, had its wild moments, but I was too young to be a part of the big boys in that sense. So I was still right. far away from that. Um, and then obviously I, I feel like I had that beautiful sense of friendship and camaraderie in every band, but naturally I go to power and I go to that because I was, in my own skin, super comfortable and at a place in life that I, <clears throat> I was inviting that in. That's what I wanted. And, right. uh, I feel like 2013 was my first year. Glenn Brown was there. We had just a cracking lineup, great group of guys. I was so invested cause I was flying in from New York all the time. Right. And they so made a commitment, but... major commitment and they made the effort that every time, uh, Briscoe was coming over, it was on. And it was like, whether it was it's restaurants on. to party, to this, to that, like it was painful. I remember the flight home every time was painful, but it was so much fun. And that was the thing is it's um, while uh, the quality and, and, and I think because it was so much fun, the band was so good, really, yeah. because we were it just connects, having, right? yeah. it all connects. If you're thriving and you're having a great time, that band is going to be your, like peak, peak there as well. So we were right. 
we were just enjoying life inside that band and the music was coming out of it the entertainment the camaraderie the it was just so much fun Such you did a, a concert time. too energy right that was the that, energy that same year that uh, helps that like, connect like people and, and like Big have time. good banter and that was a fun one for me to come into first year coming into a concert which with a whole bunch of new repertoire and stuff was like right was excellent was so much fun so and that carried forward for every single year i was with the band like it's just the camaraderie and the setting and uh, it was enough serious and enough play and enough professionalism in a, in our presentation and music that was just like right. a perfect little mix you know yeah, yeah if it's too it's serious so it's just not fun if it's too much fun then you kind of know where you are uh <laughs> so you so you kind of need just like choosing a medley that sense of leadership you need to make sure you just blend all of that really beautifully and the nice thing right. is too like i walk you know i'm sitting here today and man i have some great friendships in this circle in in right. the power outside of the power everything i just i feel like i miss the worlds this year because more because i wanted to walk around and give people a hug and say hi you know because that was what i was most excited about like just going and seeing yeah. everyone you know yeah 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 you love the 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 friendship the camaraderie and you guys i mean obviously i was not playing for the band but and and you you and some of the guys and mm. uh it, it looked like you guys were having so much fun ultimately you show up to practice i mean it's probably you know three times a week uh in the week leading up to a major so yeah you know, if everyone shows up, everyone's having fun, you come up to every practices and you ultimately play it better. So um, listen, Chris, but, I'll, I'll say too, Chris is on. like, you know, Chris is when it's competition time, man, there's, you see competition, Chris, when he comes in, right. It's very serious. It's a different, different person. Oh, yeah. But I think, yeah, I think the moment you come off and you look at everything, it's the moments in between that mean everything. And I think as long as you're having fun in the middle, which we definitely were, it made yeah. those serious moments, right. Like necessary, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and knowing you, you were probably showing up, you know, flying to New York and always having your pipes like, you know, the best quality you could get, things you can get in New York, in uh, yeah. in Spain. But exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, pipe band aside, you know, bagpipe aside, we both um, love uh, design. Obviously, we work together. Uh, but I'd love to, and you travel the world uh, with uh, your your wife and uh, and River, your son. Um, you are now in Mallorca, Spain. I am. Yep. Mallorca. Uh, how, how is that? It's been a few months, right? Well, Rafa Nadal and I are uh, very good friends now. We're, <laughs> we're great. He just gave me a call. Right. He, won, he won his round. I saw him last night at the U.S. Open. He yeah. says, uh, how is she doing? I like, yeah, good. Right? I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I bounced around my life a fair bit. Um, born in Toronto, went down and did a short stint in Miami. Miami to New York for almost seven mm -hmm. years. Uh, then over to the UK. At that point, it was a pivotal move. It was either Australia or London. And actually, Pipe Band did play into that because I was very invested in power and stuff like that. And I knew that that would be a much easier commute and trip. Um, so went to London, lasted about six years in London, back to Canada for four years. And with COVID and the sort of the state of the world and um, wanting to live your truth and your narrative, I think it was, you know, while the Canadian government, a lot of governments were locking a lot of things down, we thought about where we wanted to be. And that was a mix of uh, uh, proximity to the sea, to the water, for river to grow mm -hmm. up close to, weather, um, mountains, and then also be back in Europe and close to the UK, which is where my sons, you know, a lot of his cousins and everything are from. So that right. was heavily important to us. Nice. That's, uh, yeah, you travel quite a bit. Obviously, I, I, I've seen it um, uh you know, knowing you for a few years, but that's, uh, yeah. that's great. What's, um, uh, it's so on the side, you run a, a design studio for people that don't know. It's so funny because uh, I had Chris and Blair and, and then you and, and Blair is also, you know, a creative person on the side and um, conversations are, are sort of similar, you know, when, when you're, you know, working on a creative field, you always challenge, you know, things that, you know, your client or what you do are, 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 you challenge ideas all the time. And so I exactly. see sort of similarities in, in terms of like, uh, well, what I do is challenging, you know, a client ideas to, to, you know, take it to the next level. And then you look at pipe and it's like, you know, looking at it from a, a, a okay, how can I challenge uh, what's going on or challenge the music and what I do. So it's funny to see that the similarities, but you run a design studio out of Mallorca, right? I do now. So more? you can say it's a little bit out of here, but it's the team is heavily distributed. So 
there, we are a brand and digital product design company for early stage investments, early stage products. So if you're a seed funded idea, early stage idea, you have no branding, you have no identity as in logo, tone of, vote, tone of voice, messaging, anything like that. We help come and help you visualize that and what that looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like. And then usually the very first expression of that is a, dig a digital product. So that could be either a web-based product, that could be a mobile app, a piece of technology. So we design the interface of what people see and feel as they use it, and then we develop it and build it. So an engineering team behind it. So when I talk about the business being here, truthfully, I'm here, but the majority of us are in the, the, the team is in the UK, uh, Toronto, New York, and one in California. And that is a mix of copywriters, design, uh, front end, back end development, mobile engineers, um, and we sort of have just an unset alliance to each other in the work that we do. We kind of rally. To, I feel like this is years and years of cultivating incredible talent that I've stuck with over the years. I've built my own micro pipe band of, 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 of talent. And, uh, <laughs> and when, when the right opportunities come in, we just sort of, uh, we sort of piece together the, uh, the, the puzzle pieces of who we need for each one. And we put them together for each product. Right. Um, it's funny uh, hearing hearing this. It, it reminds me of the conversation with Blair, where he was like, I think he was a pipe surgeon of five at the time, and he uh, had a first employee, and you know, he had to come up with harmonies for the the melee of the tune, and he was at work, and it reminded me so much of when we were together in London in the same office, um, yeah. and you know, obviously I'm a drummer, so we're not like you know playing in the office, but. We're definitely blasting, you know, bagpipe music um, in the shared space yeah, with other I people. Know. They're probably like, "What are these two I weirdos? Can you and the French guy living in London and then playing in a pipe? What's going on?" <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of funny. Good time, good times. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, before we wrap up, anything else you want to share? What's what's next? Like, you think Reeve will your son will be into playing, or he's seen you play? I imagine when uh, probably he was younger. Um, is this something like you? you're thinking, you're like, I kind of want to have him, you know, see me play or, or I want him to, to, to start picking up. Oh, you're not someone that will put pressure on him, but you know, what, kind of no, I'm, I'm the kind of dad that is, I'm going to follow his lead and see what he likes, but I hope yeah. in the back of my mind, he's a sporty kid. So that's his thing. And at this moment we're pushing, you know, it's all sports, everything sports, but I hope he finds art and music because i feel like what they do for your brain for your soul for everything is just such a big yeah. win i feel like the reward i've had regardless of the framework of pipe bands having music in me has been such a level up in life and i just yeah. you know i think there'll come a stage and a time he's too young now he's only six years old but he's starting to get perked up about bits and whatever the instrument whatever the thing is <clears throat> i hope he um he falls into that if it's bagpipes uh, I will learn to soundproof uh, my basement real fast <laughs> <laughs> and give him the perfect space to practice. <laughs> you should, here's the trick. You should teach him how to maintain a bagpipe and then. <laughs> so that I can, can go and play it. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> oh, my son. Here's the like steps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, God. Amazing. He's going to be like 10 and listening to this and be like, I can't believe you guys were talking about yeah, me cleaning up my so dad's funny. backpack. You know, it's funny when you think about future stuff, I guess maybe it's a good last little sediment. It's like I sit here and I, you know, while I manifest things for future and I think about where I want to be or the things I want to do, so much of it is just uh, knowing wherever you are at the right moment is exactly where you should be. And I think for me, Mallorca, us right now, man, this place is amazing and it's beautiful. It's beautiful and perfect for right now. But a lot of people have asked me, is this your new home base? Are you going to be there forever and everything? Like, what is forever? Am I going to join a pipe band again? Who knows, man? Like, are, are we going to move Mallorca, pipes and drums. Yeah, well, think... we'll see. Eh? <laughs> I don't know about the uh, <laughs> level of talent maybe, but we'll have to check on that one. But, you know, it's like one of those things for as far as I can see, with my son and music, with my life and design, with my own music and my expressions of what I'm doing right now is exactly what I should be doing. And I feel like there will be birth of stuff for me in the future. And if that brings me right back full circle to a pipe band or brings us to another country again, that's why we're here just to live and experience and yeah. have a great time. So that's sort of like my, 
that's my my next thing is just to see where the wind takes us and if it stay if we're here for a little while and then amazing maybe it brings me back into you know a pipe band in scotland at some stage who knows but yeah i feel like you've always had like and and, and people you know a few people more and more people surprisingly i feel like are like you know going all in because it's demanding to play in the band right so and especially if you're not there you have to like flying and, and it costs and all that kind of stuff but i feel like a lot of people do like a five year six year sprint and then they kind of like stop for a few years and then they miss it you know this yeah. kind of naturally you miss it but it makes you ask what do you miss and that's yeah. when I start to think about it. It's the friendships and, and also playing music, right? Because now that I got a son, when I have free time, he gets my time. And, and right. a musical instrument isn't getting my time. And I miss that because that's an outlet that I don't have. That now I'm just, now I'm now, you know, maybe I'm my tennis game's getting better, but <laughs> my bagpipes aren't. Oh god. We say we wouldn't <laughs> talk about your tennis games. Um funny enough for people that are listening to uh to this, we uh in London we would we would uh, have our racket in the office and then just uh walk around. This that was a good time. That was a good time. I, I can't believe you didn't mention the just let... what's that? Say it again? Uh, I can't believe you didn't mention the uh you know when we talked about what was your best camaraderie uh during, you know, pipe band stuff. You didn't mention uh, me beating you at the tennis court in uh, in London. Um, I'm sorry. When I'm sorry. Should... When did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> the competitive side of me is going to come out in a minute, real fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, it, um, your tennis is getting better. Good. That's uh, it's good. To, it's good to hear. Tennis is getting good. Listen, I think like my quality of life right now. All, my biggest thing is like quality of life for me and, and my family and what we have. And it's like, it's excellent right now. And whatever we can keep doing to continue that and keep that mm -hmm. as best as we can is like the most important thing to me. And as my son gets older, I start thinking about schools and shifting around and shifting him around and getting more sensitive to that kind of stuff. He's a super, right. you know, culturally street smart kid, but I think, you know, it's important to ground him. Uh, so he feels comfortable in his friendships and his place at some point. So we'll, we'll soon see that. But like, like we said before, with the riff of life, like if you release the need to control life, um, and maybe this is a pipe band related thing too, and you just let, uh, nature take its course and see where life throws you, you'll be amazed. Yeah. I think at the stuff and the ideas and where you land, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, on those notes, it was awesome uh, just to hear and also, sh you know, share with other people that are listening that, you know, it's not just about bagpipes sometimes, there's, you know, more in, you know, your travels and how it inspired you playing with the Frasers early uh, into your, your, your pipe band career. Um, yep. And then traveling and how it impacted and the camaraderie that you had. So I'm, I'm, I was excited to have you here because I know your opinion in it and you have a lot of ideas and like sharing stuff. So um, thank you so much yeah, for Thanks, for, buddy. Uh, for I appreciate in. you having um, me on, bud. Thanks, man. Yeah, of course. Now we're going to go back to our, you know, uh, daily Our regular pipe band uh, chat. chats. <laughs> yeah, regular pipe band chats. Um, but uh, <laughs> but I'm glad I'm glad you came, uh, came on and I'm, I'm excited to uh, push it live and, and have people listen to your story. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.